Aston Martin has launched an unusual double bid to try to undo Sebastian Vettel's disqualification from the Hungarian Grand Prix. Vettel finished second behind shock winner Esteban Ocon at the Hungaro ring but was disqualified after Aston Martin failed to provide a sufficient fuel sample using the correct procedure. The team has committed to appealing the disqualification and has petitioned for a right to review as well. So what did Aston Martin get wrong, what does this two-pronged defence mean and how might it have ended up in this situation given it's adamant there was more than enough fuel left in the car? We're going to try to explain that as best we can and if we do a good enough job feel free to leave us with a thumbs up for our efforts at any time and make sure you join in the debate in the comments section as well. Vettel stopped the car on track after the flag and the FIA was only able to take a 03 litre sample post-race instead of the mandated 1 litre sample. The steward said Aston Martin was given several opportunities to remove the required amount of fuel but only 0.3 litres could be pumped out. Team principal Otmar Zafnauer told the stewards there must be an additional 1.44 litres left in the tank based on Aston Martin's calculations but as that fuel couldn't be extracted, Vettel's car was found in breach of the technical regulations. The stewards also noted that it shall be no defence to claim that no performance advantage was obtained. The FAA technical department sealed and impounded Vettel's entire car while Aston Martin used its 96 hour window to decide whether to commit to the appeal. Now the team has initiated the appeal process but it is also pursuing a right of review which we'll explain shortly. In addition to impacting the second podium of Aston Martin's first season of its major rebrand, the outcome of the disqualification has an impact throughout the championship standings. Provisionally, points leader Lewis Hamilton has been promoted to second place and Carlos signs into the top three in the Hungarian Grand Prix results. Fernando Alonso moved up to fourth ahead of Pierre Gasly, Yuki Tsunoda, Nicolas Latifi, George Russell, Max Verstappen and Kimi Raikkonen, who inherited one point. The revised results drop Aston Martin back behind Alfa Tauri in the Constructors' Championship and move Ferrari level with McLaren in third. Williams also gained a valuable three points on Alfa Romeo despite Raikkonen's elevation into the top 10, further securing eighth place in the championship. And on the driver's side, Hamilton's championship lead increased by two points to eight in the wake of Vettel's disqualification. A statement from Aston Martin said the team has requested a right of review alongside the appeal procedure as a result of having discovered significant new evidence relevant to the sanction which was unavailable to it at the time of the FIA stewards decision. Aston Martin choosing to go down the appeal route and request a right of review is unprecedented. It means it's throwing everything at the available processes to boost its chances of getting the disqualification overturned, which we shouldn't really be surprised by given the team was quick to embrace legal action last year as racing point. But focusing on the now, both legal routes were open to Aston Martin and it acted quickly enough to pursue them both. The review process exists separately to the appeal process. It can be used to reopen a case with the stewards if the competitor can provide sufficient new evidence, whereas the appeal process leads to the case being heard by the FIA's International Court of Appeal or the ICA. Trying to get the Hungarian Grand Prix stewards to change their initial decision is the quicker of the two options, as a full-blown ICA case can take much longer to be heard. And Aston Martin is unsurprisingly confident that it does have the necessary evidence to make a review possible. However, continuing with an appeal alongside the review could be an insurance policy. If the stewards reject Aston Martin's supposed new evidence and do not permit a review, the appeal could still go ahead with the FIA's international court. That depends whether an appeal of a steward's verdict is permitted if a right to review the same verdict fails, and we don't know the answer to that because this has never happened before. If it does go to the ICA, then Aston Martin will be able to present its case in full and argue it properly whereas the review process could end before it even begins if the stewards fail to consider what Aston Martin provides as new evidence. The right of review tends to be a sparing option for teams, but this is now the third time this season the process has been initiated. The first was when Alfa Romeo pushed to get Kimi Raikkonen's penalty in the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix overturned, and Red Bull then tried to get Lewis Hamilton's British Grand Prix penalty increased. The requirement for a 1 litre fuel sample to be given after a qualifying session or a race is long standing in Formula 1. Lewis Hamilton lost pole position for the 2012 Spanish Grand Prix because of it and Vettel lost third on the grid in Abu Dhabi later that year for the same reason, so there are plenty of precedents for this punishment. 
The sample is required to allow the FIA to check it matches the homologated fuel, with the FIA requiring one litre to ensure it has enough to compare, in addition to enough for B samples. In cases where teams are aware they are light on fuel, cars can stop on the slowdown lap to ensure they have enough fuel for the sample, with Williams drivers George Russell and Nicholas Latifi both pulling over shortly after the chequered flag in Hungary. Judging how much fuel you put in the tank for a race in changeable conditions is always difficult because you can't be sure how the weather will pan out. It's also a delicate balancing act to ensure you can cover the mandatory 1 litre fuel sample given the ever-present potential for a race in which you are running more competitively or harder than imagined. Potentially, this is what happened to Aston Martin, with Vettel running second for the majority of the race and continually building up energy to have a runner overtake in Ocon. It's possible the fuel uses simply got away from Aston Martin's estimations by a tiny bit each lap. When Vettel stopped his car on the slow and down lap post-race, he didn't stop until turn 12, after already suffering from fuel surge for a couple of corners. That would indicate that if the fuel was in there, the pickups weren't getting it cleanly. If Aston Martin can come up with a reason for this lack of sample, like a malfunctioning fuel pump, that might help it build a case. It may argue that a new lift pump would successfully extract the fuel, its adamant is in the tank. But it may be some time before we get an answer, and in the meantime the race's technical expert Gary Anderson has suggested that the rule should be changed to require a sample to be taken before the race, which is standard procedure in IndyCar. This could be tested to ensure compliance and will reduce the possibility of a post-race disqualification as it could be dealt with more quickly. But regardless of whether the rule is unfit for purpose, as it stands it is clear, and Aston Martin's failure to produce the required sample is, historically, fair grounds for exclusion. Any lawyers out there care to suggest what Aston Martin's case could be? Let us know in the comments if so. If you appreciate our efforts to explain the situation in this video, then please leave us with a thumbs up, even if Vettel's disqualification gets you down. And if you're new here or not already subscribed, hit the button to change that, and we'll hopefully see you soon in another video.